Okay, from time to time, we have teams that win championships, and when they do, we like to introduce them to you. Would the women's cross-country team join me on the stage, please? We're here to introduce these ladies to you and to celebrate not one, but two championships. You know, we used to uh, compete in something called the National Christian College Association, and we learned quickly we were the fastest Christians in the country, and we decided we want to see if we could outrun the sinners, and uh, these women can... Uh, The women's cross-country team, we're awfully proud of. As you already heard, they just returned from Florida where they won, uh, they had already won their third straight Gulf South Conference Championship. But down in Florida last week, they won our first regional NCAA South Region Championship. And we're very proud of these ladies. Congratulations. That's what they're holding right here in both of these. So let me introduce these women to you uh, individually. First, the freshman from Roswell, Georgia, Elizabeth Beckham. From York, PA, Olivia McLean. Step forward one, girl, so we can, to, from the balcony, you all pretty much look alike. So uh, step forward so we know who you are. A freshman from Gulf Breeze, Florida, Hannah Spooniebarger. Anna, thank you. Congratulations. Sophomores from San Jose, California, Emma Clark. Where is Emma? Way to go, Emma. Sophomore from Granville, Michigan, Audrey Royer. Audrey, way to go. A juniors, now this junior, I mean, it says on my notes from Oh My God, Northern Ireland. Is that the name? How do you pronounce that? Oh, Oma, excuse me. Uh, let's leave God out of it for heaven's sakes, but it's spelled O-M-A-G-H, Northern Ireland. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tony Moore, congratulations, Tony. Uh, another junior from Roserath, Germany, Celine Ritter. And Celine uh, was the overall individual champion in both the Gulf South and the regional championships, the fastest woman in the field. From McDonough, Georgia, junior Tori Reeves. 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 Okay, Tori. From Adelaide, Australia, a senior, Charlie Boxall. Charlie, congratulations. And placing second only to her teammate, Celine, in both the Gulf South Conference and in the South Region NCAA from Botkins, Ohio, Chloe Flora. Clo Chloe Flora. More seniors from Muskegon, Michigan. Kendra Irving. Kendra. From Signal Mountain, Tennessee, senior Becca Umbarger. And our coaches, our assistant coach is Joe Crook. And the head coach, whom it would not surprise you to learn, is the Gulf South Women's Cross Country Coach of the Year, Caleb Morgan. Caleb. And before we let these ladies go, we'd like to also say we have a very talented and successful men's cross country team, and they finished second in the conference and second in the Gulf South, I mean in the South Regional, which means both of these teams, top three qualifiers from a region, qualify for the national tournament. Both these teams have qualified for the national tournament, and they will be going to California to run for Lee in the national tournament. Stand up, guys, and turn around and give a wave and a salute to the guys. Congratulations to both these cross-country teams. We're proud of you. You know, it's only a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, that I was literally praying, God, break this heat, this miserable heat. I can't handle this heat. Remember how hot it was around here? Every day it was hot. Okay, God has a sense of humor. And uh, also, you know, he, he remembers these things. So now we're heading into cold weather. 
but uh, bundle up and let's enjoy these last few weeks together. Let me get rid of this thing because, you know, did you notice when I reached for this microphone, it made me fall? Did you notice that? Okay. I'm not saying it caused me to fall. I'm just saying, got the microphone, I fell. (laughs) I want, instead of giving you a message from myself today, I want to give you a message from a fellow student, a student who was here a few years ago, several years ago. Her name was Odessa. You notice I used the past tense because Odessa, while she was a student here at Lee, went home for Christmas holidays and in a skiing accident near uh, Seattle, Washington, Odessa was killed. I have a commitment when Lee students lose their lives, if if it's at all possible, and it almost always is, I'll be there, stand by their parents. And invariably when that happens, you know, the attention goes to who was this girl? What was she like? What did she have to say? What was her Lee life like? Much of the time when a tragedy occurs in the life of a student, I don't particularly, you know, the odds are statistically, I may not know that student very well, and that was true of Odessa. I didn't know her very well. She had been in my general psychology class that semester, and she was a pianist and worked sometimes in the studio with my wife, Darlia, who is an accompanist in the School of Music. So these two ways, I knew who Odessa was. I had a a face in my head when I heard the news. But soon after she died, I learned that she had kept a blog. Now, this was a few years ago before Facebook and Instagram and uh, Twitter were, and those, those kinds of social media things were quite so common. But she, there was a little blog site, and she kept a blog. I would probably have never known about her blog or never read her blog. But as Darlie and I got our stuff together and Made, made our plans to go out to Seattle to stand with her parents. Someone told me about the blog. I asked them to go ahead and download it for me, maybe print it printed out for me so I could. It was 130 pages, but I wanted to be able to have it with me on the plane and read it. And, and then I, I went to my file and dug out her bio that she wrote. You know, though many of you have been in my psych class, and you know that I always ask students at the first to write an introduction of themselves. Uh, themselves like you always do with Gateway and many other classes. Pulled out Odessa's bio that she wrote for me to the class and the blog. And you know, I, I realized as I read that that Odessa has a message for Lee students. Not just that year, but in any year. And I want to share it with you, Odessa's message today. I want to share it to you in her own words along with some comments from God in his own words. A scripture first. 2 Corinthians 2, 3 says, You are a letter from Christ, written not with ink but on human hearts by the Spirit of God. Your life is a letter. And whether you leave behind at whatever the time comes, God willing, it's many, many, many decades from now, whether you leave behind fragments of actual written messages, your life is a message, and Odessa's life was a message. Let me tell you a little something about her. She was a senior at the time of her death. She was planning to graduate that May. She was a music ed major. She had a 3.9 GPA, although she would never have thought of herself and wasn't generally thought of as some kind of egghead, not at all. She was 22 years old. She sang in choral, and she played piano, although she wasn't a piano major. She was a pianist for Ladies of Lee. She came from the town of Squim, Washington. Now, Squim is actually west of Seattle. I don't think I even knew there was a place west of Seattle until Odessa. I thought of Seattle as being on the west coast, but actually Seattle is on, not quite on the west coast. You go around into the 
uh, Olympic Peninsula, and there's the little town of Squim right on the water. So you could hardly get farther from Lee in the continental United States than Odessa came from. I asked, why, how did she find Lee? And as a matter of fact, she found Lee on the Internet. She'd never met anybody who came to Lee. Her family didn't come to Lee. She grew up in this little town in a very conservative working class family in this little town of Squim, Washington. She wanted to study. She went the first year up, to, up into Alberta somewhere in Canada. It was just so cold. She came back and went on the web. She looked for places in the south that had scholarships she might apply for and had a good, strong music major. And she got a long list, and she started down that list, and she landed on Lee. That's how she came to Lee. What we know about Odessa comes from her activities, to be sure. She was in Ladies of Lee, as I mentioned, in Corral. She lived in Cross Hall. She accompanied voice students. She worked two different jobs the whole time she was here and when she was back home. She liked doing the standard thing. She drank coffee and studied and worked. But she had a kind of settled intelligence that in retrospect looking back seems to me to be a maturity rather unusual for her age. If some of you were around, you probably wouldn't know her. The next Odessa Nelson may be sitting, God forbid, in this chapel this morning. But in a school this size, any given student is unknown to most other students. And when we all came back from Christmas holidays to learn that Odessa had died, most students didn't know her. Our paths just don't cross. Most of you have no personal connection with the vast majority of people in this room. You might ask yourself, if I suddenly and tragically lost my life, how many of the people sitting in con center here with me would even know me? And the answer is obviously most students would not know you. But for those around you and for the Ripples on the pond, which your life creates, there's a message implicit in what your life is, all of us. And th that message from Odessa is what I'd like to talk about this morning. We get a pretty good glimpse from what she wrote at how she looked at life. And I don't think it's too much of a stretch for me to say if by some miraculous way, and I hope this doesn't sound morbid to you, Odessa could be here and I could hand her the microphone and ask her, what does she have to say? I think these are some of the things she might say. You've heard all this advice before. There's nothing earthbreaking in this. But let's listen to these messages from Odessa. Message number one. Be yourself. Be yourself. Let me quote this slide from, or this, this comment from Odessa. She wrote this in her blog in January. It was about studying. She said, I've never felt more like a nerd than tonight as I sit in the music library studying music history while the rest of the campus is at the basketball game and tap night. Yet, for some odd reason, I am blissfully happy in it. Now, what's the message there? She's the one that uses, describe, describe, uses the word nerd to describe herself. Everybody's at the ball game. Everybody's at tap night. She wasn't into the Greek thing. She didn't, wasn't hostile to Greeks. It just wasn't right for her. But she says, everybody's doing that. I really feel like a nerd. But, you know, for some odd reason, I'm blissfully happy in it. <clears throat> what's... Odessa's message, be yourself. Go with what you are, with what you want to be. Do the things that make you happy. And when you do the things that make you happy, then you can be content in that. And God said something rather similar through the words of Paul in Philippians 4.11. He said, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content in Philippians. 
So let me say to you, many of you who've just arrived in your first semester and you're still not totally settled, you haven't found your groove, you don't really know what your place is, you're still casting about, but let me say from Odessa, you know, this above all to thine own self be true. And if it makes you happy to sit in the library while everybody else is at tap night, then sit in the library and be content in that state you find yourself in. A second message from Odessa. She was comfortable with herself. She didn't try to be anybody else, but it wasn't from a lack of self-confidence. It was just from knowing who she was. But she would also say to us, get involved. Get involved. Read these words she wrote about dorm wars, which we just finished here. Dorm wars. She said, I think that it's in these moments, she was reflecting after she went back to her room after dorm wars, I think it is in these moments we are most alive when desire, loyalty, physical exertion, and community come together in some form, even if it's pushing someone down the court in a shopping cart. Odessa, even though she was determined to be herself, was willing to throw herself into things that involved other people. She didn't have a really overt style. She wasn't a here I am kind of person. But she had a willingness to commit. She came to Lee and plunged into everything all around her, not just for the sake of being kind of neurotically busy, but because these things engaged her and she knew how to be passionate about things. She knew how to have the fun in shoving somebody down the basketball court in a golf, in a shopping cart. And God says to us in in Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Plunge, engage, go all in. And whether your life is over at the age of 22 or at the age of 102, make a determination you're not going to leave anything on the table. When you go back home for Christmas holidays in about a month or less, go back home for that holidays knowing, yeah, you came to this place and it was a little daunting at times and it was a little cold and unfamiliar at times and you were homesick at times and, you know, but you had the courage to insert yourself into the mainstream of this campus and to engage with other people. Odessa was considered rather shy by most of her friends, but it wasn't from a lack of self-confidence. It was from an abundance of self-possession, and that allowed her to get involved with other people. Third, I think Odessa would say, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't let discouragements or obstacles keep you from fulfilling your dream and your destiny. I love something that Odessa wrote about when she came to Lee originally. She got on a plane in in, uh, Seattle. She didn't know anybody. She flew in here with two pieces of luggage, and, of course, her luggage got lost by the airlines on the way here. So she landed here in Cleveland, Tennessee without her luggage, and she was one day early so she could get a cheap flight, and she got here. There was nobody here but her. Read this from her bio that she wrote for my psych class. I knew that Lee was where God wanted me to be. I arrived in the spring of 04 in the middle of the night to an empty cross hall with no luggage. It was a comical first night away from home with no friends, luggage that had been lost on the way, and nothing with me but a little green carry-on bag. And she spent that night in one of the dorms up here on the Ped Mall, and she said, yet in the morning when I walked outside, I knew I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Now, the question is, if you know this is where you're supposed to be, don't quit. Don't get discouraged by the lost luggage in your life. Don't get discouraged by the lonely night in the dorm in your life. Don't lose sight of what God has for you and what at one point you've clearly understood he has for you. So she's able to look at that and say, hey, it was almost comical. They lost my luggage. I got a little green carry-on. I don't know anybody. I'm all by myself. But I walked outside and I knew, yeah, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Now, I'm so convinced that so many of you are right where you're supposed to be. 
And if you'll not quit, and you'll not get discouraged, if you'll persevere, push through the obstacles and the discouragements, God's going to do something great in your life. God says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that, hey, get this, this is a promise from God, so that in all things at all times you will succeed in every good work. She had lots of discouragements, Odessa did in childhood. Darlie and I enjoyed getting acquainted with her family when we went out there in that little town, meeting her siblings. She came from a family without much money. Financial aid was a big deal to her. She worked two jobs all summer, every summer. When she came to Lee, she had two jobs. One was an accompanist for voice students over in the School of Music, and the other was for Sodexo, making sandwiches before daylight every morning. Now, you know, we get all these little prepared sandwiches that are around in these venues. Somebody's got to get up early that morning and make them. Odessa may have looked like a star to somebody, because after all, she stood on the stage with Corral, and she looked pretty, and, and, and she seemed in full control, and she was a good pianist, and she played for Ladies of Lee, and you might have looked up at her and thought, well, you know, there's a girl that's got it all, had it all. No, she's a girl that got up every morning early before daylight, went over to the calf, to the Deacon Jones dining hall, and worked in the kitchen making sandwiches before she went to her first class. She did it cheerfully because it was the what she had to do to follow God's promise in her life. She shared that she'd never really had a, a real boyfriend. She went all the way through high school. She said, I never had a b- real boyfriend. I never really had a real honest-to-goodness date. You know, this one of these old-fashioned dates, you know, where some guy calls you and says you want to go out. Until the last summer, between her junior and senior year, she went back home. She was 21, about to turn 22, and for the first time, she met a guy, and they connected, and and she fell in love, and he fell in love. So coming back for her senior year, she said it was really hard for her because for the first time, she's leaving the guy back home that she's in love with. But the whole thing was she was going to go back and graduate and marry him that summer. She was with him that day in that ski slope. She couldn't wait to get back home and see him. She was a very good skier. She wasn't doing anything stupid or dangerous. She was skiing down on the last run of the day. It was almost turning dark, as her boyfriend told me. You know, it was late. If you've ever been skiing, you know, it kind of suddenly gets a little, little almost like dusk early in the mountains. They were making their last run in. She wasn't doing anything foolish, but she was skiing kind of close to the trees on the left-hand side, and she hit some kind of patch of soft snow, and it just threw her into the trees, and he skied over there to her, and she died on the ski slopes that night. And she had reached a point in her life where, where she had dreamed of as a little girl, which is have a boyfriend, be ready for marriage, be ready for college, for, for college graduation, ended that evening on that ski resort. But Odessa approached all that almost as if she knew it was coming. Almost as she knew she had her life so well together that she was prepared to stay alive a long time and prepared for whatever else lay ahead of her. If she were here today, she would say, here's something else I'd leave behind. A message from Odessa. Serve others. She wrote in her psych bio, she said, two years later, she was talking about coming out of high school, I went with my dad to Kampala to do mission work. Kampala is the, the capital of, of uh, Uganda. Uh, those few weeks completely changed my perspective, goals, and perceptions of what I thought life was. So she gets to college. She's seen the other side. She's seen the part of life that where serving others gives you the greatest satisfaction. And that's when she decided, she also wrote something for her education major, that's when she decided she wanted to be a teacher. She wanted to teach kids. First Peter says, every one of us should use whatever gift she has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. This really emerged 
in Odessa when she went to Uganda. Bill Green, dean of the School of Music, when I asked her, what do you remember about Odessa Nelson? He said, her willing spirit. Not her towering talent, although we, you know we got lots of great musical talent on this campus, and she was one of them. But she tutored kids. She accompanied kids. She played with my wife, and my wife was always impressed with her willingness to reach out there and do for others. After Deep Day, she signed up again to do some one of these urban outreach programs and went to Nashville and did inner city service. Somehow in her youthfulness, she had still learned that the do things for other people was the best way to be fully alive yourself. And I think if she were here, she would say, serve other people. Fifth, I think Udessa would say to us, get to know other people now. Now, you know, I guess in all the things she wrote, she so rarely expressed anything like regret. This was the closest she came, I think, in what I read in those 130 pages, to regret. And in a sense, this is poignant to me because it's so how, how, how so many of us feel. She said this at the end of the semester in April. <clears throat> I've been frustrated by the amount of people I've been meeting over the last couple of weeks who are the most interesting and fascinating, but who are also seniors. Seniors who will be graduating this spring like they'll be gone forever in two weeks. Why do I meet these people now and not at the beginning of the semester? Odessa asked herself. Why do we suddenly decide that we'll introduce ourselves now and not one of those hundreds of times we've previously seen each other all semester. Wow, what a challenge. And here you sit waiting to know that other person. And Odessa says, hey, I've been around campus with these people all year long. Now it's a week before graduation. Now I meet them. Where was I all this time? No question in my mind, Odessa's message to us faculty, staff, students, all of us today would be, do it now. Reach out now. Meet people now. Reach across that gap that separates you from somebody else. Make that effort. Get acquainted. Don't wait till the last week, the last day. God says to us in Ephesians 4.25, for we are not separate units, but intimately related to each other in Jesus Christ. Sixth, I think Odessa would say, personalize your faith. Personalize your faith. Too many times we let other people frame the questions in our life and then provide their answers. And too many times we either accept or reject or stall instead of framing our own questions and finding our own answers. You know, she said at one point, many of you have probably felt this way, talking about back home and on campus in May of 2004, she said this, it's as if I live two separate lives which are entirely disconnected with one another, and I jump back and forth from one to the other every four months. I suppose that's all part of being a college student. Have you ever felt that way? There's that Life at home, that family, the, that life that's there, and there's a life here, and you're sort of jumping back and forth between these two places. And then when she returned to Lee after the summer for the beginning of the fall semester, she said one of the most beautiful things I think she ever wrote. She said about being on Lee campus, I am again in the place where we live our questions. The place where we live our questions. And I'd say to you that this is a place where you can not only ask your questions, you can live your questions. This is not a place that's going to put you down for having questions or jam our quest answers down your throat. I want Lee University to be a place where whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your problems, your dilemmas, your questions, wherever you start from, wherever you think you're going, that Lee ought to be a safe place for you to, in Odessa's words, live your questions. 
with respect for other people, with respect for the culture of the campus, but within those brackets to say, okay, this is my time to frame the questions in my life and seek the answers. And Lee needs to be the kind of place, since I first read this, In Odessa's blog, I've challenged our faculty and our staff with these words many times. I've said, we've got to make sure Lee University is not the place where we jam our answers down everybody's throat. We divide people and vilify some and glorify others. We embrace the ones that are more like us and marginalize the ones that are not like us. We can't be that kind of place and be God's place. We need to be the kind of place where students can live their questions. And somehow Odessa had had a way of stating that that's convicting to me and challenging to me. Philippians says in Philippians 2, words that I have taped to my bathroom window over in my office because I think they're so important. God says to us through the Apostle Paul, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. And last, trust God and be prepared for everything. You know, Odessa came from this really strict conservative church. You know what she did when she got to campus? She didn't know where to go to church. She just knew she wanted to be faithful, so she actually got the phone book. You've heard of those, haven't you? The old-fashioned phone book, and she looked up Church of God. Praise God. She actually wasn't from the Church of God, but she knew we were Church of God school. She looked for the names of all the Church of God congregations around here, and she went to two or three of them, and then she got interested in the Episcopal Church, and so she went to the Episcopal Church to see how that worked for her, and then she tried a lot of different things. Why? Because she was determined to trust God for her discipleship, or for her theology, for her doctrine. She didn't want to be a Church of God girl or an Assembly of God girl or a Baptist girl or a Catholic girl or a Presbyterian girl. She wanted to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. She wanted to have an authentic, personal faith. It didn't belong to her parents, however much she loved them, back home in Squim, Washington. It didn't belong to me, the president or the faculty, but the, belonged to her because God gave it to her. She had that kind of trust, and she was prepared for anything. She was prepared to live a long, full life, but she was also prepared to die. She wrote these words in the spring of 2004. I don't want to grow up to be an old lady. Aren't there any other options? I'd love to talk to Odessa about that now and say, Odessa, what were you talking about, girl? No, she was saying, I don't want to be an old lady. What are the options? You know what I'm reading there? My life is wide open, and I'm trusting God in whatever it is. He takes me. She said in another place, I wonder what would change if my actions toward others were completely void of any consideration for myself. If I lived every day as dead to myself but alive to Christ, I would perhaps rarely think about myself at all. And she wrote in that bio that I mentioned these words. I think this is kind of the signature of her life and her message. She said, I've never trusted God so much with my future in my whole life. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is more than able to work everything out for his good pleasure, and I'm just along for the ride. I wouldn't for all the world manipulate or exploit the life and death of Odessa Nelson. Let's put that picture up, guys, if you're up in the booth. Let's put Odessa's picture back up. I don't know how long it stayed on the screen. I wouldn't exploit her death to try to pressure you into some kind of temporary and phony spiritual decision. 
I've seen that done and you've seen that done and I loathe it. On the other hand, we would be foolish not to talk about the obvious reality that lies before us and that's the fact that for all of us, life is uncertain and unpredictable and no one knows when it will be over or what it will include. We all have an appointment with death, of course. We just don't know when it is. So for Odessa, as she flew home to Seattle, she settled into the warmth of her family for the holidays, even as she skied down the mountain, flirting and laughing with Chris as the snow fell, Odessa, of course, had no idea that for her, that trip home, that day, that moment, would be her last. So what would Odessa say about all that? She would remind us that in an uncertain world, she was prepared for whatever might come next. She prepared for life by working hard. She prepared for her future by looking toward it with hope and optimism. She prepared by being open to love in her life. And she prepared for death simply by living her life in the grace and the spirit of Jesus Christ. When you live that way, every day, you're always ready for the long haul, the short haul, or anything in between. The key was that Odessa trusted him. And I think I want to challenge you this morning to join her in that trust. One final scripture that's very familiar to us. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Bow with me, please. Thank you, God, for the life of Odessa Nelson and every one of these men and women who sits before me. They are my spiritual sons and daughters. I love them, but not nearly as much as you love them. And I ask you now to open their hearts up to trust you completely. In Christ's name, amen. Would you stand, please? Wow, that's kind of heavy. But before we go, let me make another announcement. This is about sports, too. Man, this is sports morning, isn't it? Soccer, men's and women's soccer. For the first time in Lee University history, both our men's soccer team and our women's soccer team has earned the right to play the opening game of the postseason at home. And so to celebrate this, we chose the coldest, windiest, most miserable afternoon in the semester. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're playing. The women play at 3 o'clock. The men play at 530. I can't tell who we're playing up there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're going to have chili, right? Hot chocolate. If we didn't plan to have chili and hot chocolate, somebody go to buy chili and hot chocolate. <laughs> hey, bundle up. Put on your long johns. Come out to the soccer field. Let's root for our soccer teams to start the postseason off right. Amen. Let's pray the college benediction. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. God bless you. I love you.